Welcome to our show, Film Talk with AJ Dean. I'm AJ Dean, your host, and I have the ever talented and very creative co host with me, Paul Vato, in the building. Hey, Paul, how are you doing this week? I'm doing very well. It finally stopped raining in Las Vegas. Oh. So we're dry and it's starting to cool down a little bit. So that's wonderful. Uh, so it's so wonderful to be here and having this great guest. And thank you for having me, AJ. You're very welcome. And yes, you're absolutely super right. We have a special VIP guest, an executive, a studio executive in the building with us, Lisa Papajimas. Let me tell you about her for just a second, and then we'll give her a very warm welcome. She's an actress, producer, and executive, VP of Marketing and Publicity at CSSE Screen Media, CSS TV Group, Crackle Plus, and she is amazing. So let's give her a very special warm welcome. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Hello, AJ. How are you? And hello, Paul. And thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, doing awesome, doing fantastic. It's so wonderful that you are here. I was so excited looking all week towards this moment. And Lisa, you really have done it all. You've been in, you've been uh, in front of the camera and behind the camera. Um, mm -hmm. You were born in California um, and you were also raised in uh, Hawaii, Greece and Ethiopia. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Just all over the world. So <laughs> many different places. Wow. So you have a very eclectic and wonderful background uh, tra traveling around the world. And so let's get right into it. This is so exciting for me. Um, like I said, you have been on both sides of the camera, actress and executive. So let's dive into these two wonderful movie posters I have here. We have <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is so great. You, you, I, you're you're the stars of these films, if I'm not mistaken. Oh yeah, 100 percent the stars. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that's all we interview. That is yeah. the only people that we. I was the A list of those stuff. <laughs> no, I was I was lucky enough to um, get my SAG card on uh, T on Theodore Rex. Um, Whoopi Goldberg got me my SAG card, so that I was lucky enough um, and blessed in order to be there. So that was such a long time ago. And then Hello Herman. Um, I played uh, the mother role on theater. And then when it came time to do the film, I played the PE teacher. So um, I was lucky enough to be in that. That was my uh, friend's show. So I laugh about it because it's so long ago. It's such an old, old me. <laughs> it's there. It's wonderful, Lisa. And it's you and I enjoyed it. Jeff and I watched it. Um, we watched both of them and anyone can watch them online. It's so much fun. Theodore Rex. Um, I, I love those type of movies. It was fun and great. That's right up my alley. I wanted to ask you, though, how did you get that part? I mean, did you meet Whoopi Goldberg? Um, well, she was a producer on the show. So actually I got it through my agent. So it was like, show up. And that's what I did. Um, so, but with her, you know, um, she was, she's such a wonderful person. Um, and circle back, you know, I, I do some shows with her executive producer now. Um, but you know, she was just great on set and really helping, you know, I was str I'm not struggling at the time. I think I was, what was I? I was in um, uh, college at the time. So she was nice enough in order to help, uh, you know, a college student that was getting into the industry. And so I greatly appreciate that. I appreciate anybody that helps young um, artists out. Yes. And you played the secretary. I saw you and you did phenomenal at it and you did perfect. And then also in Hello, Herman. Um, I saw you immediately uh, in your pink top. You were wearing a pink top. Is that right? 
I can't even remember. That was like how many years ago? So I can't even remember what I was wearing. But I'm sure if you saw pink, then it was definitely pink. And I loved your reactions. You were very emotional in it. And it was wonderful. You had a scene where you were running towards the camera. You're basically saying, please don't. I don't want to give too much away. But you were, you were yeah. basically, basically having emotion towards the camera. And it was perfect. So uh, I just wanted to... I just want to congratulate you on that. So you're a wonderful actress and also a uh, in incredibly professional executive. So let's talk a little bit about that because you work in the studio system, right? Yeah. I, I mean, that's, you know, even when I went to USC, um, I delved in both of them. So I either directed, produced or act. And they're kind of good at that at USC, trying to teach you all facets of what you can do within this industry. I gravitated more towards the executive position because you have more control. And as an actor, I had no control of when I was going to work or who I was going to work with, you know, unless if, you know, they really loved me and I auditioned right for them. Um, I had a great career as a commercial actress and, you know, I'm very blessed on that. Um, that definitely paid the bills. Uh, but as an executive, I get to make the decisions. And I think, you know, I'm a control freak. So at least that way I can control now. Yes. And I um, commend you and compliment you. I'm so proud of you, um, Lisa, for uh, getting up in the ranks, as if they say, right? Is that is that the right term? I think, I think yeah, as far, you know, I was looking at... Um, a website just recently of another studio and I only saw one woman on the C level, you know, and I was just like sitting there going, why can't there, why can't there be more women? So for us to get to the VP or SVP or president position or head of, you know, there's still not as many as I would like there to be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I love you being a part of the new Hollywood movement. Yvette Vargas, I want to give a shout out to her. She's so important. She's just like you. Um, all power, you know, we support our women. Um, we love our women, uh, executives and professionals and actors, and uh, we are there for them. So I just wanted to uh, mention that and say kudos to you. Um, also, I wanted to say, um, Lisa, I have on these notes here, before I go to, uh, give it over to you, Paul, um, right. one thing that I was, uh, uh, amazed at is that you have, you're on the board of directors at USC. Yeah. So of the 10 organization, which is the alumni organization for entertainment network, right. So the entertainment business. Um, so yeah, so that, that's great being there. I'm, I'm, like I said, I always support young artists, um, it's just something that's vitally important to me because I feel as though at SC, you know, I was given so much support um, that I have to give it back. Yes, absolutely. And over to you, Paul, for, uh, I wanted to give you a chance. Go ahead, Paul. Wonderful. Uh, I, you know, I felt like I should have started the conversation with Tecanias. Tecanias, uh, <laughs> Kalaisi. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, I'm always interested in family backgrounds and things like that. Mm -hmm. Are you indeed Greek? Uh, yeah. Is that your? Yep, I am Greek. <laughs> my, my first, <laughs> my last name, Papagemus. It's it's a, mouthful. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little Greek. Like my friend yeah. Nicholas Papa Nicholas, who was yeah. my first mentor. Um, <laughs> but congratulations great. on your pivoting almost from in front of the camera to behind the camera, and you Thanks. guys kind of touched on that, where it's something that's great. We need it, whether you're Latinos or women or anyone that's not represented. You're mm -hmm. right. You look around and you're like, why are there not any other women in the room? Or why are there not other Latinos? There's nobody else that looks like us or thinks like us. So mm -hmm. it's wonderful that you were able to do that and then encourage the next generation to come up as well. Yeah, I think, you know, you have to. The, the thing is, is entertainment isn't just one color. You know, when you, you look at the screen, granted, when it was black and white, totally different. Um, but you, you have to have all these different types of people that resonate with other people, you know, that are watching the consumer that's watching. So yeah, there needs to be more of us at the table so that we can address the concerns of what we think the consumer needs. Because I think when you're just looking at it through a white lens, you're not really capturing what's out there. Yes. You uh, look at demographics, right, Lisa? You look at, um, uh, favorable, you know, uh, trends. What else do you look at when you're um, doing branding or strategy? What, what comes into play? 
Well, I think, you know, when, when we're developing a project, the first and foremost thing is the story, right? What is the story about? How is it going to, you know, emote somebody and where are we going to take them in this journey? And, you know, my, my area is to look at who is the audience and will they watch and listen to this story? Will they, they click on? I mean, it's so noisy right now with so much out there. It's like, how do you make that person click on? Is it, you know, is it the key art? Is it, you know, pushing it out and letting them hear it over and over and over again through media? So that way they want to watch, um, you know, so these are all factors that we look at when we're developing you know, a series. Um, so that's, you know, those are things that I, that I look at. What's the temperature going on? What do people really, you know, want to do right now? Do they want to escape? Do they want to laugh? Do they want to be, you know, um, scared <laughs> or do they, you know, what type of emotion are people looking at right now? And generally in the recession, they're, they're going to look at wanting to laugh or wanting, you know, horror wanting to be scared taken out of the reality of what they're living right now I mean, absolutely i i love session right now but we're definitely going through something where inflation is high so you want to escape right now so that's what i'm looking at and how do you escape i love that i love that and um so uh let me ask you this our podcast everybody's doing podcasts like pod and i um paul and i i'm sorry it's, it's, what did you call it? Hey, he called you Pod. Hey, Pod. That's okay. That could be your new nickname. That's what I'm going to call you. Uh, pod Botto. Botto Pod. Pod Botto. Yeah, I love it. Pivod. There you go. I, I retake number two. You know what? I'm going to keep this in because it's real. But Paul, Paul has his own podcast. I have my own podcast. Everybody's doing podcasts. Right, Paul? That's right, Pod. I mean, uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and we all we do. I love to laugh. I I do love to laugh. But is do, our podcasts? I mean, they're everywhere now. It's oversaturation, isn't it, Lisa? What do you think? I think. Well, I think all media is a little bit oversaturated right now, except for probably the film industry because nobody wants to go to the movie theater. So trying to get stuff in there is not oversaturated right now, but you're competing with TikTok and face, you know, Facebook, okay, Meta, um, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, you know, whatever's out there, you're competing for that little portion. And it's like, how many people can you get? You know, you want to build your community, which is another app um, uh, and Clubhouse. And so how do you attract that noise? I mean, we're so addicted to this right now. I mean, like what I normally do on a Friday night is I no longer touch electronics until Sunday. That's just what I have to do for myself, for my own clarity. Yeah, I'll carry my phone and I probably will, you know, text somebody, but as far as going on anything, I don't do it because I need that detox. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, maybe I read a book instead. I'm going old school. Um, but, uh, you're competing for all of that. So even with a podcast right now, which is our new form of radio, um, or the modern day form of radio, um, how do you compete for that audience? What, you know, how do you, you know, what is the, the service that you're giving? Yeah. Right. What is unique? Like, for instance, I'm on Zoom and Paul is on Fireside. That's what works for him. So there's a, a lot of different platforms out there. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I think even Sally Cologne has now launched a new show. I was watching hers on Amazon today. So everybody's doing shows. It's great. And I just love being able there being able to support everyone. So I want to thank you, Lisa, so much for being here and supporting me. And um, it, it's so much fun talking about trends and, and branding. And I do want to mention that you have worked for TriStar Sports Entertainment, right. New Line Cinema. <laughs> Go, keep on going. No Smoke Productions, L'Oreal Professional. You've yeah. appeared on, Paul, I have to tell you, this is amazing. She's got incredible CV resume, creative resume. She's appeared on ABC News, Good Morning America, CNN, Entertainment Tonight, Extra E, MTV, The View. And she was also a model with Elite Models. This wow. is incredible. So, so far in your career, you have done, you've accomplished so much already. 
Lisa, at your young age, um, <laughs> what what's next? What what what's next? You know, right now, I I think I'm exactly where I need to be. Um, I really love the journey that I've had, you know, what has brought me here. I think everything that I've done in my past has allowed me to be where I am. There has, you know, there's been peaks and valleys and there's been valleys sometimes where I sit there, you know, asking God how long this, this season's going to last. And I understand those, those depths that I've gone into um, has given me the strength to be where I am right now. Um, I think, you know, being a part of an organization that's constantly growing is something that is fascinating and exhilarating, you know, just like this week acquiring Redbox, you know, it's 1200 employees that have come on over, um, and Redbox entertainment. So I'm excited to, to see where that goes. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm really blessed to be part of an independent studio. I've been part of the studio system before, um, but I think where I am right now, the people that I'm learning from and able to work with is they're, they're brilliant and fantastic. And I, I'm just really happy to be where I am, um, where I want to go in my future is what, you know, what this journey is about. And, you know, I always strive to, um, produce content and be a part of content that is at an elevated level. And, you know, that's definitely where I am. I mean, the shows that we do like Hunters and Mysterious Benedict Society are absolutely phenomenal. Um, you know, being able to work with people like Stephen King and um, Martin Scorsese is just beyond my wildest imagination. You know, as a girl, you know, sitting in USC and, and, and you know, watching their work and admiring their work and now being able to work alongside of them. And, and, and that's, I'm just in awe every single day. Wow. I am in awe of you, Lisa. You are a goddess. I just look up to you so much and oh. respect you so much. Really. Don't you, Paul? I mean, isn't it phenomenal? It really is. I think it would have been easier to have mentioned the companies that uh, she did not work for. Uh, we, we, we think that, do that list. That's fantastic. But how exciting is that though? Everything that you mentioned led mm -hmm. you to where you are now yeah. and has created this, this uh, you know, executive. And it's great to come from the trenches, I think, and know everything that, you know, that we go through as creators because you've been through it as, in front of the camera and modeling as I have, you know, modeling whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's uh, you, you know, I'm making light of the situation, but it's wonderful that now that you can really relate when you, if you're dealing with creatives and things like that, because you've been through it. So we yeah. need more people like you in the upper levels in, in the C-suites. So thank you for, for being a part of that and knowing uh, our struggle, I think. Yeah, I think, you know, you know, I have great admiration for the C-suites because I, I used to be a CMO at uh, Frank studio, but the thing is, is I really enjoy creatives. I really, you know, thrive on working with creatives and I have, you know, that creative and analytical mind. So I'm able to balance the both of them. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just, you know, I'm inspired by writers. I'm inspired by directors. Um, so it's, you know, and they've got great stories to tell. So it's fantastic is, being part of that. Is that how you found your way to this company that you're with? now and then i would assume that th that company owns all those uh businesses that are behind you yeah um yeah cssc owns a plethora of them and i i'm uh the vp of the television group so i oversee uh halcyon studios css um studios landmark uh locomotive um and a plus so any content that is developed or created from there and then with SMV, I oversee any content that goes on to Crackle, Popcorn Flicks, um, uh, truly all of their uh, fast channels as well. Wonderful. I think that that was gonna actually, that was my question was about Crackle. Is that, did it used to be owned by Sony? Because if so, yeah. okay, so I'm on, I was on Crackle. I don't know if you guys kept all their old content, but I was on a show called Starving, S-T-A-R-V-I-N-G, with David Faustino, who was Bud Bundy, uh. and and uh, Corin Nemec, who was Parker Lewis Can't Lose, they had a little series on there with 
everybody was in it. Uh, 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 Gilbert Gottfried, I mean, the, uh, Christina Applegate, uh, Ed, o Ed O'Neill, you know, they kind of had a reunion, Seth Green, and you know, all these famous people and me. And it was, uh, it was a wonderful series that we did on Crackle. And this would have been 12 some years ago, but it was kind of, I believe, the birth of all this, you know, these series that people are now doing. Yeah, well, Crackle started out on PlayStation, right? And it was owned by Sony. Uh, Bill Rohana came along and became partners with Sony. And uh, we were partners with Sony up until a year ago. And so a year ago is when we acquired the full Crackle uh, brand. So, yeah. So I don't know if your show's on there. I work on all the new content. <laughs> So I mean, we have a plethora of titles and that's the whole thing. The AVOD system is what's really, um, really starting to leverage its way up because you had the SVODs for such a long time and now the AVODs because, you know, everybody's cutting the, the cord and they don't necessarily want to buy all these subscriptions. So therefore, you know, you're looking at AVODs. And that's, you know, that's, that's where I see, you know, big surge in business that's going to be, you know, definitely be coming in the next couple of years. For our viewers out there that don't know what an AVOD is, what is that? Is that like the number one streaming platform? No, AVOD, AVOD is a advertising video on demand. So something like Crackle, Roku, Roku is a CTV. So it has, you know, um, uh, several AVODs that are on there and plus your streaming platforms. So your streaming, your SVODs are your streaming uh, platforms like Netflix, um, HBO Max, uh, Peacock and uh, Peacock and uh, what is it? Hulu, um, Paramount Plus, maybe I have to look at it. I haven't seen it lately. Amazon Prime? Would Amazon be? No, uh, Amazon on is is an SVOD, but the other ones are AVODs, SVODs, right? So they have an AVOD um, subscription level. So you pay like what, four bucks and then you have Hulu with ads. Then you can pay seven bucks and have it without ads. Um, uh, Netflix is going to be instilling that same type of platform in the next year. And same with Disney Plus. Disney Plus is going to be having that as well next year. So where you can choose to have commercials or no commercials, because you got a lot of advertisers, you cap off. You got to think there comes a point where you cap off on your SVODs, on your subscriptions. There's only, you know, not many teenagers are running out to go and buy Netflix or subscribe to that. They'll, they'll use their parents until they become like in their 20s when they have to get it on their own. That's when you increase your subscription base again. So and AVODs, you have millions of, you know, hundreds of millions of people with phones, but, you know, they don't want to pay for an SVOD. So you can have an AVOD on your phone and just watch it with commercials. Yeah. Do, are you doing anything with, or do you know about the, uh, how they're going back and retroactively adding uh, advertising into series and things like yeah. that? Are you guys exploring yeah. anything like that? Yeah, that, yeah, that's an operational thing. So, yeah, so what they do is, um, if you're going to go to the AVOD thing and generally, you know, most linear television that happened, um, or currently happens on linear, or that is now on, you know, an SVOD, let's take friends, for instance, when it was shot originally, it had its commercial breaks. You knew exactly where you needed to do your commercial breaks at, you know, an arc of a scene and then the lead in. So you, you knew that was where you're going to have your break because people will, watch the commercials or get up and go to the bathroom or grab something to eat. Um, so now sometimes when we are making like, for instance, hunters, we don't really put those gaps in because it goes straight onto Amazon and it's a drop and same thing with mysterious Benedict society. So what's going to happen now is the people at ops is going to figure out where that break should be. And then they'll put that code in to have, the ad or what they do is they do have programs that automatically do it, but that could be all of a sudden you're in the middle of a monologue and boom, it goes to a commercial. So that really doesn't help with the storytelling, but yeah. unfortunately until that gets better, you're going to see those types of breaks, you know? Amazing. Wonderful. Thank you. So a uh, great question, Paul, thank you for that. And so really, Lisa, it's gone back to like the regular old traditional TV. Is that, is that kind of sort of, well, but we're it's a little different because see, it's on demand. It's like, if I wanted right now to watch friends, and I'm just going to use friends because, you know, 
Um, I can easily go on to whatever, whatever SVOD I think it's on now, and I can go ahead and watch it. So it's on demand. It's not programmed. It's not, you know, appointment style like it was back in the day where it was appointment style. Um, I mean, you do have uh, Disney and um, Apple Plus that are doing their drops once a week. And we do it as well, where we do it, you know, weekly. So that way on Wednesday it drops and then you can watch it. And then it, it leads you to come back each week. You know, that's our ploy in having you come back rather than drop it all at once. Um, because we do survive on the revenue of advertisers. So we need to have you know, advertisers advertise so that way we can pay the bills. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. 100%. I, I and understand that. Them. And we need you to watch them because that's how we make our ad sense. How can we uh, subscribe then uh, to, do we go to um, chickens, you know, uh, you just go to crackle and you can watch it without even logging on um, or you can subscribe. Okay. All subscribe. right. So yeah, we're subscriber base free, so we don't make you do jump into a whole bunch of holes and stuff. That's so nice. Thank you for doing that, and um, I'm just so I'm so thankful, and grateful that we have a, a wonderful executive here with us to answer these important questions. Lisa, you are wonderful. I okay. also wanted to mention, Paul, that Lisa has done projects with the following. Uh, celebrities, Robert Downey Jr., amazing, Al Pacino, like you mentioned a little bit more a while ago, Chevy Chase, Steve Carell, Tim Curry, and Pierce Brosnan. Um, yeah. Phenomenal. You have a lot of um, great memories working on these projects with these fine actors. Um, how, did, how does that make you feel to be a part of that? Um, like I said before, to be, you know, to be with these people, I'm honored because if I, they're extremely creative, um, and you know, like Stephen King is amazing and nice and kind and, you know, uh, just in awe to be around that type of talent. So, uh, you know, like, uh, Joe Morton, I, I'm in awe, like, <laughs> it's so funny because, uh, we have a show of his called inside the black box and um, I couldn't sleep one night last week and I was watching TV and uh, Speed was on because uh, I was in a hotel room and uh, I was too lazy to get out my computer and like pull something up. But um, I was looking, I'm like, oh my God, that's Joe. <laughs> that's Joe. I'm talking to Joe tomorrow. Um, you know, so it's just like, it's just, they're just so talented. It's so brilliant to watch them work. And I'm just equally in awe with the directors that, that we work with and, and some of the producers as well. The producers hold everything together. So I'm in awe of those who I'm most in awe of is the showrunners. So those are the ones that I, I pay homage to the biggest. So. Is, why is that, Lisa? Is it because they do a tremendous amount of work? In um, yeah, I think that is. I mean, like right now, you know, working with uh, Jordan Kerner, in developing a show that we have um, with him uh, that I, I can't name. Um, but uh, to see how they start from the inception of the concept to developing the scripts, I mean, and developing the decks and developing the, the look and the feel and the every aspect of the show, you know, there's, they're the ones that hire the directors. They're the ones that have that vision. Um, so to sit there with them, you know, we have the IP, um, but to sit there and just watch how they think and listen and, and I mean, I'm in heaven to be sitting in the room. I mean, right now sitting on zoom with them, but to, you know, to just be, be a part of it, you know, to be part of them. I, I mean, I have to pinch myself a lot. It's really wonderful. And I'm so happy for you. And again, congratulations, Lisa, to oh. you and your company on acquiring Redbox. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah, we just did that. <laughs> Is this an exclusive that I have here? Uh, no, sorry. It was put out into the press a week ago. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Last Wednesday, I think is officially when, when the deal was closed. I mean, it's been in the making for two years. So. It's wow. So this is huge, isn't it? I, I think it's, 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 it's definitely a huge deal. 
Um, so, I mean, like with any companies that have these mergers, you have times where you have to sit there and, and work through things. And I'm excited. I'm excited to to work on that level because it's a different structure. It's a different, you know, I'm used to developing content, not so much, you know, the programming of it. So it's really interesting to watch that. It's really awesome. I'm so happy for you. I'm excited for you and your company as well. So now I want to switch it up, but I'm going to give it over to Paul in a second, but I want to ask you one more question. Um, this is a little different. Um, it's not per se about film, but it's more personal. I wanted to know what makes you happy, Lisa? What makes your heart uh, happy? Oh, God, that's a great question. Um, you know, right now my faith is what makes me most happy so that's what i have to really um uh res you know focus on is 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 my faith my faith and my belief you know is what makes me the most happiest i love that i love that answer because that's what makes i'm the same that's what makes me happy is that my faith can always give me that peace mhm mm and yeah. and is that for the same for you, Lisa? Well, I think it, it's it's it gives me a different outlook on how I see life now, as opposed to how I saw it when I was, you know, <laughs> when I was in the midst of it all. Like you know, with with the uh, when you're young and coming up in the entertainment industry and and all the you know stereotypical stuff that we go through from you know because I. I worked at CAA as an agent. So as an agent's assistant covering a desk. Um, and so, you know, all of the climbing the ladder and the backstabbing and all of that. Now it's like, oof, no, I'm not going to worry about that. Yeah. You know, you know so it allows me to, to really um, be present in what I'm doing and to have faith in uh, the universe has a plan and knowing that that plan is taking me where I need to go and I don't have to worry about anything, but it's taken me many years to get to this point. It's not like, boom, all of a sudden you have to work on it every single day. So that's what gives me the most happiness is, you know, working on that. I love this. I love what you said so very much. And thank you so much for sharing uh -huh. that about you and your life and what's important to you. And mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much. And over to you, Paul. Yeah. Hey. This is wonderful. It's uh you're sharing such amazing things. Are you are you Greek Orthodox? Is that your... No, I was I was raised Greek Orthodox Jew because uh my mother's side is Jewish. Um, however, uh, I was raised more Greek Orthodox, but I think uh for me I'm more um spiritual based. Uh sure. I I appreciate my foundation in, in Greek, you know, my Greek Orthodox religion, but I'm not somebody that really resonates with religion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I resonate with, you know, God being the omnipotent person or being that um, God is. Uh, but uh, my faith is really based upon, you know, multitude of, uh, I don't want to say multitude of religions, but a multitude of philosophies is probably a better word to use, you know, especially since I had the privilege of growing up all over the world. I got to see so many different religions. And the one common thing is they believe in love and God. And so regardless of how God came to you, if it came in the form of Jesus, Muhammad, you know, um, uh, Abraham, who, whatever, uh, to me, it's one main theme is about love. And that's what I resonate with. Wonderful. Thank you. I would, man, I could ask you so many questions because I would love okay. to hear about you being uh, raised in, uh, was this in Africa? You also spent some time? Yeah, in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, Addis Ababa. Uh, yeah, my dad is, my dad is uh, a Greek Ethiopian. So he was born and raised in Ethiopia. And uh, we all left there when it turned communist in 1974. Do you speak Amharic? I do not speak a damn word of it. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. I would, uh -uh. I would love to have you on my podcast, Paul Vato Presents. Sorry, AJ, I'm always trying to poach all yeah, of our best. I mean, you, you, can, you can poach. I mean, I can come. I'm more than happy to come over and, and, and talk with you as well, Paul. I have no problem. <laughs> in english <laughs> so, yes yes, I, yes, my, yes my dad spoke nine languages he did not give that gene or that gift over wow. to 
because well, I mean, I can speak languages, but there it's so just on the basic level of greeting and 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 you know politeness and all of that. I just for some odd reason. Well, if Hadi stop, if Hadi stop for being here. Thank um, you. Hey, you're you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful question, Paul. And, you know, I'm looking at my clock and I'm so sorry, we're going to have to start wrapping it up soon. Oh, it's gone by so fast, but I do want to do final thoughts. We always do final thoughts. And, and I have to give credit to Yvette Vargas because that's where we got it from, right, Paul? We sure did. And it's so great to see that we're all part of that same group, the new Hollywood. And it really is. It, it is a new Hollywood. So Thank you for, for a lot more to do. <laughs> We've got a lot more work to do. <laughs> we sure do. Yes, sure. we do. So let's go to final thoughts. This can be, Lisa, something important in your heart and what you want to say or any and a shout out to anybody or whatever you like. Whatever I, I, th I think the main thing is this is that, you know, I don't know what your demographics is. Can you tell me a little bit about what that is? Then I'll know how to to speak to final thoughts okay demographics is um basically clubhouse um friends and family <laughs> and yeah. that's the easy one and then i think it's mostly um uh 30s and up so i think i think the thing is is you know for me it's like having an array of careers that I've had, right? They've all been in the entertainment industry, you know, from being in front of the camera to being behind the camera as a director and a producer and being an executive and also owning my own studio. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a journey. And to me, it's about finding what you're passionate about. So my final thoughts is you have to find what you're passionate about and you have to be able to understand that, you know, it's, it's not about uh, making tons of money in this industry. It's it's not that at all. It's about telling stories and it's about making sure that you spark some type of change or some type of message that needs to come through. I don't care how minute it can be, but it, you know, art changes people. Art allows people to, um, to be retro, you know, introspective of who they are and hopefully then change the course of their actions of what they are doing. Um, so, you know, if anything I can give is, you know, be passionate about your, what you're doing and making sure that your message is, is the message that you want to put out. I love that. And that is such a wonderful and beautiful words eloquently said, uh, Lisa, from a fine executive, we admire and respect you so, so much. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I've enjoyed myself. I, I've loved this so, so much. This is one of my favorites. And Paul, over to you for final thoughts. You're putting me on the spot here because I, I just enjoyed listening so uh, much to Lisa. Thank you so much for sharing that. But I think what, what I kind of took away from this is, you know, we're kind of the sum of all these parts of all these experiences that we've had. And it brings us, it's, it is really about the journey. And it's yeah. not about the money. It's about being happy and fulfilled. And that's where I'm kind of finding myself right now with social media. Uh, my nickname is The Pod. So as you heard earlier, <laughs> but podcasting, I've fallen in love with podcasting and you know, <laughs> speaking with people and, and chatting with them and learning about them. And uh, the social media has just kind of worked itself. I just posted a couple of videos and they're almost at 2 million views, which oh, blows fantastic. my mind. The, thank you, the, the reach that we have. So uh, thank you all for supporting. And that's important because the reach, you know, you, you've built this community. So the reach that you have um, is important that you inspire that that community that you've built, um, you know, for, for positive purposes. I mean, people do it for negative purposes. I just, you know, I'm hoping that everybody does it in a, in a positive, passionate way. Absolutely. That's, that's our motto here. We want, uh, we, my motto, I, I've said this before, but really is we celebrate you and it's everyone who I have the privilege to meet like you, Lisa and Paul, um, to work with alongside. And I love uh, listening to you and being in rooms with you, Lisa on Clubhouse. We met there and I'm going to continue to do that. And I'm a fan of yours. I'm, I'm a fan, Lisa. I just want to let you know as well. Okay. 
Uh, thank you. That that means a lot. I just I'm too humble in order to uh, thank you. I'll just say thank you. <laughs> You're very very welcome, and we love you. Sending big uh, love and love hugs you. to you. And uh, for my final thoughts is, um, wow, I'm just I'm just so blessed to have you. And I just want to say, uh, everyone, listen to what Lisa says about keeping the passion alive and making a difference and change in the world. No matter how small your light is, your light is important and mm -hmm. and let it shine. So thank you again, Lisa. And until next time, I even got all purple here. Look at me. In all purple. Uh -huh. Love the fan. I just bought a fan because I was in Mexico and it was so damn hot. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it feels really good. So yeah. thank you so much. And um, we love Mexico too. And uh, Paul, take care. Lisa, until we meet again on Clubhouse, much yep. love. Much love to you guys. Take care. Bye for take now. Care. Bye. Bye. Bye.